With each new year and Harley Davidson new releases, one of the things I find a lot of fun is to roam through the parts. It used to be that big thick paper catalog that was uh, really fun to thumb through, but now we do it electronically. So I was browsing through some of the parts and I came across this part, embedded navigation. So it turns out that the navigation feature of the new 12.3 TFT screen is not enabled on the 2024 Rogue Glide or Street Glide. It is enabled on the CVO models. However, there's now a subscription to the cloud features of this navigation. I noticed on my phone in the HD app, I now have an expiration date for my navigation cloud services. This was quite a surprise to me and not something I've seen since I bought my 23 and a half. I always assumed the navigation was part of the system and I'd always have it. They do call out, you know, you have to use Wi-Fi on your phone to get to the cloud services. So you gotta provide your own data connection to the cloud services. And then if you want them, you have to renew them every three years. So I did talk to Harley about this and it is true that the CVO owners will have to renew after three years for the cloud services, which includes map updates, but also traffic and weather information. It is unclear what the price will be for the renewal. He did not know, and there's nothing published at this time as to what that's going to cost. So a bit of a surprise. So if you have a 24 Rogue Glider Street Glider and you'd like to turn this service on, you first have to buy in to the embedded navigation to turn that feature on. So $349. So the software is really already in your system, but it's not there unless you pay Harley to turn it on. It does it over the internet, so you don't have to take it into the dealer, but you've got to sign up. So when you first hit the navigation icon on your new 24, it's going to prompt you to subscribe. But the big question, is it worth it? So I can tell you I've had the privilege of using the system for a while since I was an early adopter of the 23 and a half. I would say the system is rather laggy as expected and it's buggy. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The navigation will always come on, the basic navigation will be there. But getting the cloud services to work is rather troublesome. You first have to use a Wi-Fi connection from your phone. So you're going to have to have the hotspot feature on your phone. You have to, may have to pay your carrier for that ability. And then once you have that set up, I will say good luck getting it to connect each time. I usually have to power cycle my phone usually to even get the network to show up for the Harley, and then it doesn't connect automatically. So you're gonna wanna get that all working before you start the bike and ride off. Otherwise, you won't have any luck while you're riding trying to connect your Wi-Fi on your phone to get the weather or the traffic in the navigation. I will also say there are some missing features from the old Boom navigation that are not in the Skyline OS navigation. The big one for me is zoom. So there is no handlebar control to zoom in or out. And I know as I was riding, I would always want to zoom out to see just where that next turn was coming and what it looked like. Um, but in this case, you've got a pinch and zoom with your fingers. I will also say the pinch and zoom is inconsistent. Sometimes it'll zoom out just a little bit and then stop. And other times it'll work, but it's still pretty laggy either way. So why would you even opt in to the built-in navigation? If you have an iPhone, you can just use CarPlay and then whatever map application you like. Well, Harley is quick to point out that if you want to use the full width of that screen, or at least 80% of it, to see the map, you can only do that with the built-in navigation. And if you're an Android user, this is your only option to get navigation on the bike. However, Android users, there are some magic boxes, and I know that a, a particular box does work. So you can put the box in your uh, compartment on your bike, and then you can get Android Auto wirelessly on these Harleys. A video coming on that soon. So what I recommend you opt in, well, that's really a personal decision for you. The map is quite beautiful when it fills that screen. 
But I think it, the product under delivers, especially with that cloud connectivity. The Wi-Fi connection to your mobile device is just so tricky to get started and get it connected. And then I find it kind of unreliable even after that. You remember your phone has to have very good data coverage while you're traveling for it to work at all. So if you want to look at the weather, you're going to have to have very good data coverage to maintain that Wi-Fi personal hotspot. My guess is you'll end up just using a weather app on your phone and you'll up, end up mounting your phone to the handlebar for true accurate information, especially in remote areas. Time will tell if Harley can upgrade this software. They certainly are relying on this Skyline OS to provide this. And so far, we've not seen any improvements to the product since it was originally released. But there is hope and the screen is beautiful. It is your decision, but would I spend $350 to turn it on? I don't think so. Not after having a chance to experience it. I also think this is a big challenge for buyers because you can't try it out. So you're gonna have to spend the $350 to turn it on, and then there is no refund, and they're very clear about that in the product description. I think Harley should really offer a way for riders to give it a try, give it a 30-day trial, and see if they like it before committing to the $350. As far as the renewal goes, I don't know what it costs. So we'll see how much they want from us to renew the cloud services. Again, that gives you the updated maps, the traffic information, and the weather information, which are very cool features but only if you can get the system to connect to the hotspot on your phone. So these are my thoughts on the embedded navigation and this new offering in the parts and accessories catalog. I hope you found this information useful, and if you did, you'll share it with someone else. But until next time, in the friction zone.